Hi Deborah, how are you? Hi. Um, I'm wondering if you could just briefly introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your research. I am Deborah Steibeck. I'm a professor in the Development and Psychological Studies program in the Graduate School of Education at Stanford. My research focuses primarily on early childhood education now. I have mostly done work on the effects of different kind of instructional environments on children's motivation and learning. I'm also currently doing some work that is related to professional development for teachers, and I'm working with some faculty in community colleges and Cal State universities to think about how to promote or support better pre-service programs for both pre-K teachers and early elementary school teachers. So you said it seems like most of your research focuses on early childhood education. So I'm wondering, what do you see as the, the key issues facing um, early childhood education policy today? Mm -hmm. One issue is access. Mm -hmm. And although I think there seems to be not quite consensus, but a strong, a strong support now for increasing access to preschool for young children. There are big policy issues about uh, where it, it should be provided. For example, should it be provided in um, public school settings and run through public schools, or should we have a kind of mixed approach so that some of the preschools are in public school systems and others are community-based centers? Uh, there are different revenue streams right now and different accountability systems, and so one of the big issues is creating some kind of clarity out of a lot of chaos and making it a lot easier for people to provide services to young children. Mm -hmm. Other big issues, I think, have to do with the training credentialing of teachers. Huge variation from state to state. And in many states, California included, uh, preschool in particular, has a pretty low bar and pretty weak requirements for training. And I think given the evidence that it's quality preschool that really makes a difference, not just access to preschool, uh, we need to think harder and think about what kinds of credentialing policies we need to really provide quality preschool. So how do you see uh, current research being able to, um, well first sort of what how is current research already sort of um, addressing some of these issues? And then where are there sort of gaps? There's still research necessary to address existing issues. I think researchers have really demonstrated the importance of quality preschool and the long-term benefits of that, both in terms of opportunities for children, but also even cost-benefit analysis now. They've been done by economists. So that research, I can't say, is done, but I think it has had a very significant effect on policies. Mm -hmm. We know that quality matters. I think we still have a lot of work to do to fine tune what we mean by quality and what aspects of instructional programs really promote the kinds of outcomes for children that we care about. We also don't know very much about what matters in teacher training. The debate, I think, unfortunately, has been framed pretty much as BA versus not a BA, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that that's really the policy question. I think the, the policy question the researchers need to address is what do people who are going to be providing an educational experience for young children need to know and be able to do, and to work from there to think about then what are the implications of that for credentialing and training and support systems for teachers. Mm -hmm. So how do you think, um, or do you think that practitioners and policymakers and researchers are working collaboratively to address a lot of these issues? Um, and also, do you have any particularly good examples of uh, these types of collaborations or mm -hmm. partnerships that exist? A lot of the research has really gone down two tracks. So you have the researchers over here are doing the research, and then you have policymakers here and then you have the protect practitioners here, and not a whole lot of collaboration communication. I have seen some good examples, though, of where the benefits of collaboration are really showing. Mm -hmm. One, I think, is the San Francisco Unified School District collaboration that Stanford has. Mm -hmm. 
we are responding to the real needs of the school district, the questions that they have. And so we can be much more confident in the research that we're doing that we have a ready audience. They, they care about the issues that we're studying. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think those kinds of collaborations where you have districts and universities working together have tremendous benefits. And I hope to see many more of them springing up around the country. So just as a final question, um, thinking back to your research career, how do you think um, the sort of culmination of all of the research that you've done, whether it's been focused in more motivation or some other area, obviously you've done other work as well, um, how do you see it It has impacted the field of early childhood education today? <laughs> oh, I wish it was impacting the field of education. I think the work that I have done mostly has focus people's attention on motivation as an outcome. Most of the research on instructional environments have focused on academic learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I've been able to show in my research is that some of the instructional approaches that may provide short-term gains academically, if they do, can have negative effects on students' motivation, which in the long run could undermine their long-term success in school. Uh, I think a lot of the research has also simplified the way we talk about educational context as either play-based or academic. Mm -hmm. And I have tried to, in my writing and in my work, make a more complex argument for what I refer to as playful learning, mm -hmm. that you can provide instruction for children as young as three mm -hmm. that is developmentally appropriate, that supports their learning, that doesn't undermine their motivation, and which for the children doesn't seem like work or school or academic work at all. They're just playing games and having fun. So trying to reformulate the conversation about effective instruction so that it doesn't create these simple dichotomies, but really looks at how you can support children's social emotional development, maintain their high levels of motivation, which most kids, children have when they're young, mm -hmm. and at the same time help children develop some of the basic skills that they enjoy developing and that will serve them well when they go to kindergarten. Thank you so much.